Hi, everyone. Uh, if you are just joining, we're just waiting a few more minutes for a few more people to join and then we'll get started at about uh, five minutes after the hour. So stay tuned. In the meantime, feel free to introduce yourself in the chat. Hi, Sue uh, from Wisconsin. I see that there. Um, as usual, it's me, Katie from Local Line, and uh, I'm in Ontario, Canada. So we'll see you all in a few minutes. All right. Well, it looks like we have most people who are going to join at the beginning here. So we're going to get started. Um, so I'm joined today by Katrina, and we also have Chris who will be joining us as well. Chris is our sales team leader, and so he's going to be going through a few things towards the end of our uh, the end of our presentation there. So we'll see him in again again in a few minutes. Uh, and then he'll be joining us to answer some of your questions if they're kind of in that uh, area of expertise. So um, today, a couple of reminders, as usual, you'll be getting a recording of today's presentation. So if you miss it or you have to uh, drop out after a bit, no problem, you'll get the recording. Uh, if you do have to drop off and you have questions ahead of time, go ahead and pop those in the Q&A. We've actually added, this is new for us, we've added a, an arrow on our screen to show you where that Q&A is. Um, so that there's no confusion, it is at the bottom of your screen there, and you can go ahead and drop a question in there now, you can wait until the end when we do our Q&A portion, totally up to you, um, but either way, go ahead and check that out. Also, we have the chat, so if you want to comment on anything or just be part of the discussion throughout the presentation, you can go ahead and head to the chat, which should be right beside the Q&A on your screen, and you'll be able to interact with our other attendees, and we'll also be monitoring the chat, so we will see that. And we might call you out, so <laughs> beware. Uh, so today we're going to be going through some great material. We're really excited to bring this webinar to you about email marketing. We're going to be talking about eight different ways that you can really up your game. If you're new to email marketing, you're just starting out and you're trying to connect with your customers, uh, it's a great webinar for you. And if you are a seasoned vet and you're just looking for a few more ways to shake it up and add some new content, new material to your email marketing and get some, some hot tips. We will have that for you as well. So without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Katrina for our first section. And we're gonna just talk a little bit about, you know, the why and the what of email marketing before we dive into our eight ways. Awesome, thanks Katie. And to kick us off, just reminded everybody that email marketing is not dead. That's, uh... Much as it seems, you know, it's not as exciting as social and TikTok and all the video that's going on in that the world, but uh, email marketing is one of the few marketing channels that you can use to really build like an authentic connection with your followers, your community, your customers. Um, and when it's used right, it can be relationship building, profit building. Um, we're really excited. We're so behind email marketing. So um, it's a really great, easy way to reach many people one time, unless you have the manpower, the the dollars behind it. Email is a great way to en masse be really personal with your, with your customers. So the benefits of email marketing, 
um, right off the hop is that two out of three customers have made a purchase as a direct result of an email marketing message. Um, email marketing is 40 times more effective at customer acquisition uh, than Facebook and Twitter combined. Uh, these are from HubSpot, big numbers, but it is a very effective channel. Um, it's an action oriented channel, meaning that when you're sending an email to your customers, they have to do something with it. They might ignore it. And that might be one of the things that they do, but they have to open it or they delete it. it it's going to their inbox. It's reaching them directly. It's not a passive thing on social or Instagram where they may or may not see it. Um, they're going to get it to their inbox. Um, so in that way, you have the opportunity to address your audience personally. You're reaching them directly. Um, it's a little more personal than social media, of course, with Instagram or any of those channels, you're going to say, hey, everyone, you know, updates for all or great to meet all of you this weekend at the market. With email, you have the opportunity to address them personally, not only by name, we're going to get into personalization later, but a good way to do that. Um, and the other thing is that you own the channel. Um, if Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, anything like that shuts down tomorrow, very unlikely, but if it does, um, you're really marketing on borrowed land there. So email, you have your contacts, they're your own. Um, I mean, you don't own them, but you know, you have access to each of your subscribers. Um, that's a channel that's not going to go away if you do have access and you do have an email list. So highly encourage you if you haven't yet started great way or great time to do so. It's never really too late to get an email list together. When to use email marketing. Um, I mean, the short answer is always, but Email marketing is a great way to build those relationships, um, boost brand awareness. You know, you're getting your, your brand is in somebody's inbox once a week, once a month. Um, you're regularly seeing, they're regularly seeing your content. Um, great opportunity to market your products, to grow your audience. Um, you know, it doesn't have to be just customers that's on your email list, prospects as well, you know, greater community. Um, and then it's a great way to nurture your potential customers. If you do have an email list that is made up of prospects and customers, Good opportunity to promote those products and get people, you know, ready to buy. They're primed to buy. Um, and sharing your content. If you have something like a recipe or a blog post or anything like that, um, great opportunity to uh, use that in your email marketing. All right, so we're going to go through a couple of popular services here. I just wanted to highlight a couple of them that you've probably heard of. Uh, you've got MailChimp, Constant Contact, MailerLite. There's a few more, there's tons of them out there that you could choose from. But I just wanted to kind of say that, you know, like they're all relatively similar in a lot of ways. And you really do have to just look and compare and choose what's going to work for you. Um, most of these do have a free version that you can use. And so you don't have to drop a lot of dollars to start email marketing. Um, and what these services are going to do, these platforms are going to do is help you build really attractive emails. Each of them has kind of like a built-in email builder. It's also going to help you manage your mailing list and your unsubscription preferences. So um, if you were just to be doing this manually within, let's say, Gmail, it would be a lot of work and a lot of side spreadsheets and all of that to uh, be managing your mailing list and to be doing like mail merges and all of that kind of stuff. So I highly recommend you go and explore some of these tools. We personally we use HubSpot because we use HubSpot um, as a CRM, but also as our marketing platform. So they have a built-in uh, email platform within that. So uh, just go ahead and explore them, line them up side by side. What are, the, what are the pros and cons? There's a couple of websites out there that will put those side by side for you. So again, it's just really what's going to work for your business. And um, you know, the look and feel of some of those emails and those email builders are going to be a little bit different from platform to platform. So uh, it, it's all your personal choice of what you think is, is going to work for you. So before we get kind of going into the rest of our content, I did want to talk about anti-spam legislation and those considerations right off the hop. So I do want to say that Local Line is not providing any legal advice here, but we are mentioning this in order to convey to the best of our knowledge that anti-spam legislation is important and a consideration for anyone using email marketing as part of their business strategy. So I uh, just want to put that out there. So two main differences. I know that we have a couple of people from Canada on here, a few people from the States. So I'll, I'll highlight those. So in Canada, we have something called CASEL, so Canadian Anti-Spam Legislation. Um, and the three main considerations there is that you want to be obtaining consent. So oftentimes we do that through an email list sign up or when someone signs up for a service or a product. Um, there's a disclaimer at the bottom that says that they consent to receiving uh, communications from that company or that organization. So that's the way that a lot of them obtain consent to say that, yes, we can contact you um, for a multitude of different things. 
and you have to provide identification information. So you'll see at the bottom of all of our emails, we'll say, obviously it's local line. We'll have our address there, our phone numbers and ways that you can contact us. And then we'll have at the bottom an unsubscribe method. So usually it says, you know, would you like to unsubscribe from these uh, emails? Click here, or it'll say unsubscribe by clicking here. Um, and it gives you the opportunity to, uh, it'll usually redirect you to a page where you can select your subscription preferences. So if you wanna still receive stuff from, let's say like the sales team, if you're talking with them on a daily basis, or if you're talking with our, um, customer success team, you still want to be able to do that and not opt out of those, but you don't want to receive promotions. You know, there's kind of those, a lot of companies will do a few different choices, you know, unsubscribe from all, unsubscribe from, you know, just certain ones. So that's all built into those email platforms. I will say that. So you don't have to go about creating pages and all of that to organize your subscription preferences, all baked in to, you know, either HubSpot, Constant Contact, uh, MailChimp, all of those. So don't worry too much about that. You just have to kind of set your preferences or, lang or language there. And then in the States, the main difference here is that in Canada, we have to obtain uh, explicit consent. Um, in the States, it's a little bit different. So the, the re requirements, uh, the legal requirement is that you display accurate information, you give a clear opt-out method, and you honor opt-outs promptly. So just be uh, considerate of what is the legislation in, in the country that you reside in and also the country that you're mailing to. So because we, uh, you know, we mail to both uh, Canada and the US, we have to be uh, aware of both. And then I'd also say head to your government's website about this legislation. If you have any questions, that's the place to go. We are, uh, even though it's what we you know, do day in and day out, if you really wanna dive into the nitty gritty of anti-spam legislation, which you know sounds like a great Saturday, um, you can go ahead and head to the government websites and they'll give you all the, all the details there. So we are going to, with that said, dive into our eight ways to sell more with email marketing. So I think Katrina has the first few and then I'll be back and then uh, Chris will be on at the end there. I'm kicking it off. Okay, so the first- You get thing. to follow anti-spam legislation. Uh, I know I know that's tough, but- You really set the bar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, so it kind of goes hand in hand. So making it easy for folks to find your email list and to get subscribed. Um, so having forms throughout your website, again, you're going to want to then be very clear what it is you're using your information for, but having forms throughout your website to capture that information is key. Um, you can even have a dedicated landing page as well. Sign up for our newsletter. The form is on there. You're listing kind of what you're sharing, um, how frequently you send this email. Um, including it on the footer of your website is a great idea. No matter what page anybody goes to, they can always find it in the footer. You've seen that with like, you know, page links, socials, and then maybe a sign up um, on the right or something like that. Um, on your online store page, if that's an option, you can include it there, you know, sign up for our emails to receive um, product updates and, and things like that. If you are using local line, you do have something called a catalog send feature, the automated catalog send. So you can set that up. And if somebody is a customer of your online store and you do have their information there, you can send these regulated or automated emails out to them. Um, you can include it and I encourage you to include it on your products page if that's something you have on your website as well. Um, definitely include in your social pages. We talked about in our most recent webinar about Instagram, we talked about LinkedIn bio. If you don't already have that, really encourage you to set that up. Um, you can use that link in your bio to use as a like sign up for our newsletter and include it there, but even better is to have an aggregated link or a list of links where you can say like visit our website, shop now, and also sign up for our newsletter. Um, so you're just not using that really premium real estate there um, if you want to encourage people to buy. Um, having calls to action in your social posts and using that as one of the, you know, CTAs, you've talked about different ways and different pieces of content that you should be sharing within your socials. So having your newsletter be one of the things that you'd like people to take an action on and having it in your email signature. If you are emailing uh, your customers one-to-one, -one, just having a quick line in there with a call to action to say, sign up for our email list with a hyperlink to do that. So in as many places as possible, short answer and making it very clear as to what you'd like people to do. And if it feels, talk about this earlier, if you don't have an email list already, and it feels like you're starting from zero, um, you likely already have a list of people who are buying from you. Um, this could be their email, but you might have their information on Facebook DM or Instagram or however you take orders if you're not necessarily selling online. Uh, so send them an invite to your email list. So set expectations of frequency, um, content, the topics you plan on sharing, 
again, always include that strong call to action. We're big on those. Uh, if you're going to make, you know, do some marketing, make it worth your while and um, personalize it. So in this case, you know, since you are sending a one-to-one -one email, you won't be able to send it um, to everybody at once necessarily. Um, if, if you do, sorry, you can, you legally can, if you were to send it from Gmail or something like that, just actually, this is probably getting a little bit too detailed, but please do a BCC. So not everybody, you're not seeing everybody else's email. <laughs> I did, I wasn't going to go there, but what I was saying was that you will be sending like a one-to-one -one email, most likely inviting somebody. So you have the opportunity to say, Hey, great. You know, meeting at the market last weekend and uh, hope you like those potatoes that you bought. By the way, you're setting up an email list and we'll love to have you on it, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, creating a schedule. Uh, is the other thing that you want to keep in mind. We really, any of our webinars, if you've been on them, whatever we're talking about, we always talk about consistency. And the same applies here. So if you are going to set up an email newsletter and you're going to do some email marketing, um, be consistent, not only for yourself, it's just much easier to manage if you know that every Monday morning you're going to send an email newsletter, but it's, you know, for your subscribers too. They know when to expect an email from you, what to expect, what's going to be in there. Um, so good key, you know, frequency is about once a week, bi-weekly. Um, if you can't do once a week, if you can only do once a month, you can only do once a month, and that's totally fine, so long as it's consistent, um, and that you stick to the same day, typically. Um, I put here, did you know that Tuesdays are the best day of the week to send emails? That is, like, all the marketing emails in the world that have ever been sent. Tuesdays have been found to have the best open rates, but of course, test this out. Please see what works for your business. You might say, you know, I know that my customers are definitely going to be, you know, they're working nine to five and maybe they're checking their emails in the morning or the evenings is when they're going to be on their phone lunchtime. So, um, oh yes, that's right. 10 a.m. <laughs> it's true. 10 a.m. on Tuesdays. That's exactly it. Um, so, and, and we, you know, we test that out too. And that, that doesn't necessarily work for local lines. So try it out, find a time that works for your business and, and then do that and monitor it and continue to monitor it. And creating a content schedule, again, not only for yourself, but for your subscribers. What should they expect from you? I love, you know, there are some newsletters that I really enjoy getting. And I know that every Tuesday morning, it just happens to be, um, that I get this really great written letter from, you know, some people that I'm subscribed to. And I love looking forward to that. And it's a great read. So the same thing will apply to your customers. They'll be looking forward to getting those updates from you. So um, I talked about the catalog reminder email. Please set those up if you're in local line. Take advantage of that. Um, a new product alerts, you know, sharing new products, having seasonal product pairings or recipes for, you know, those who've bought the products before, process reminders, tips for success when it comes to delivery and pickups, you know, just as a reminder for those who are doing pickups on Saturday, make sure to have your invoice ready, make sure to have your invoice number highlighted or have your, you know, last name written on a piece of paper in the dashboard of your car if you're doing curbside pickups, something like that. Um, just doing a monthly check-in is a really fun idea. It doesn't always have to be necessarily a great call to action or a great big marketing lift, but just, uh, you know, here's what's going on this month in our business or this week, you know, we've had, or, or this weekend, some great updates or some fun things we did as a family. Those are always great to get. And it really endears you to your customers. Um, if they don't already know you, they definitely will after being on your email list. Um, customer contests, if you're a market vendor spotlights, things like that. Um, so not only just saying like, these are some ideas, but also put these to a calendar, say, you know, every Monday I'm going to do a new product alert every, you know, last Monday, Monday of the month, we're going to do a monthly check-in and just see like how this month went and, you know, updates for next. So having that schedule for yourself and again, for your customers, so they know. Personalizing your emails. So I've got a definition here that personalization is targeting an email or an email campaign to a specific subscriber by leveraging the data you have about them, which sounds a little shady, but it absolutely isn't. It just benefits everybody. And <laughs> um, personalized emails are very relevant and they're timely. They're coming from a person. They're coming from you. Um, if you are your business, you're one and the same, but uh, it's coming, you know, it is essentially, it seems like a one-to-one -one email. Um, a stat here is that marketers see an average increase of 20% in sales when using a personalized email experience. Personalized emails are more likely to be opened, they're more likely to be clicked on if you use personalization in a subject line. Uh, it really strengthens your customer experience online. You know, we try and as much as you can offline, you know, the same way to, to replicate what you have offline to bring that online. Am I making sense? I think that made sense. That makes sense. Okay. Another consideration that I think just like 
people who are, are new to maybe using an email marketing platform as well is like these personalizations can happen automatically in these platforms. So for instance, we use, it's called a personalization token. So <laughs> you got my slide. <laughs> we're going to get your slide. Oh, no, no, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's exactly I'm taking it. over yeah. Katrina's part here. Um, I talk a lot and I just want to talk more. So <laughs> you can totally, so I probably need, I should have taken that too. If anyone's worried that they're going to have to go and do that all manually, do not worry. No, gosh, no. Yeah. So personalizing it, um, I mean, it kind of has its definition. Yes, by absolutely use these personalization tokens, use the names that you have in your subscriber list. In most cases, um, the forms, again, this will all depend on your email service provider. I'm pretty sure they all do this. So the ones that I've used, I have used MailChimp, I've used Emma. Um, HubSpot does have the like the personalization tokens. You'll get those emails from DSW that says like, hi, Katrina, these are the, you know, she sells this week. But uh, so being able to use essentially like a mail merge, you just drop a token or a tag in your email to say, hi, first name. Um, you know, we're coming to your city this week and it'll all just populate with the information you have. So I encourage you at the very minimum when you do have a form that encourages your uh, followers or customers to sign up to your subscriber or to your newsletter list. I'm getting my words jumbled here, sorry ask for their name, make it a required field, just first name. Um, I guess you don't have to make it required, but it really is helpful and it helps you personalize uh, the emails to your subscribers. Another way to personalize your list doesn't have to be necessarily get personalized, you know, with a name, but you can personalize it by segmenting your list out into maybe two different lists. Um, could be customers versus prospects, people who bought from you before or haven't yet or repeat customers versus new customers. You're probably gonna say slightly different things to each of these groups. Um, it doesn't have to be, you know, it's not a huge time lift, but you might have just slightly different messaging. Um, another ways to personalize the experience is to set up a welcome email. Again, a lot of, it, this will depend on the service provider, but many of, you know, MailChimp I know for sure does this um, and it's incredibly affordable. So I, I really like to promote that one, but, uh, personally like it, not, not sponsored again, but we just, I personally like it. You can set up a, an automated sequence. So when somebody does sign up on your website using that form, you can set up a timer that like maybe 10, seven minutes later, they're gonna get a welcome email that says, thanks so much for signing up. Here's what you can expect from us. You know, here's a, here's a recipe that we mentioned on social or whatever it is. Um, so a great way to just personalize it and make it seem a little bit more um, like a one-to-one -one email and it is coming directly from you, which it is. It's just a easier way to do it. Um, a follow-up on recent product purchases is a good way to personalize emails. So again, depending on what online or e-commerce platform you use, which depending on the email service provider you use, um, you can you know follow up when somebody buys a certain product, offer tips for using that certain product or relevant product pairings that they might like. Um, again, just personalizing the experience. And I think lastly, whoops, I did have one more. Oh yeah, celebrate birthdays and customer anniversaries. So maybe offer store credit or a discount or something like that when it is their customer anniversary or their birthdays. So again, these are all pieces of information you'll have to you know collect from, from folks if you don't already have it. But uh, yeah, good ways to personalize more than just first name. There's many different ways. Or view. Okay. Awesome, yeah, that's... Very, very true. There's a lot of different ways that you can personalize an email and you can get creative. Like if you're wanting to send certain things to your prospects versus your customers, like that's one way that you can really tailor things. And I think that people appreciate that just like feeling a little bit known and, um, you know, the fact that, you know, that someone's a repeat customer can really generate a lot of loyalty from them. And then they feel like they're important um, and you care about them as a customer. I think that's really important and conveying that through your email marketing is, is awesome. So in terms of email structure, so now just talking a little bit more about the actual emails themselves and what they should contain, uh, what are kind of some of the best practices for structuring those emails. So some terminology I want to share with you is above the fold, below the fold, and the footer. So above the fold is if you're looking at a laptop like the one we have on uh, the slide here, it's what you see before you scroll at all. We talk about this in email marketing. We also talk about it in web design. It's everything that a person sees as soon as that piece of content loads before they scroll or move or navigate anywhere on that page. Um, below the fold, obviously everything else. And the footer. So that's the section of the email. This is 
you know, in emails is a little bit different than in web design, but um, the footer is the very bottom. It's that section. If you're, you're all probably familiar with our emails, it's the green section at the bottom um, that contains a bunch of buttons and our social follows. It also contains our unsubscribe in the bottom there. And all of those email platforms will allow you to build footers that can be reused across all of your emails in a template. Um, they're, you know, you're not setting it up every single time. The footer is that thing that I would say should be consistent and constant throughout all of your emails that you send so that your, your recipients always know that they can scroll to the bottom and find certain information. So if they see your email and um, you're talking about, you know, I have, you know, carrots, beets, um, and green beans on this week for, you know, 30% off or at a discount or two for one or something like that. Um, they can, they know that they can scroll right down to the bottom. And if you have a link in that footer that says shop now, they can go directly to your store. Right. And they know that that's, you, it's kind of like you train your audience to know that all your basic info is down at the bottom. Um, so just something to keep in mind when you're building those first few emails, setting up that footer and setting up that template. So we head to the next slide here. We can uh, click through a couple of things here. So uh, just a couple of best practices for each of these categories. So if we click, can we click back to there, Katrina, just to that first one? Yeah, so above the fold, we have this high impact visual and some key information. So everyone here will be familiar with this email. This was one of our invites for this webinar. So at the top, we have that header image, something that's eye-catching, high resolution, and has the basic info. So we chose to put the title of the webinar there, um, our little webinar badge at the top showing that this is part of our webinar series. Um, and it identifies the date, time, and a CTA. I would say when it comes to inviting people to stuff, having a CTA above the fold is always so useful. I use it when I structure the webinar emails so that if y'all just look at the top and you don't scroll and you're just like, yes, I want to I, I want to sign up for that webinar, you can without scrolling or navigating anywhere. Uh, you'll also see above the fold in this email, there's a personalization. So hi there is just our, our generic, but it would say hi and then your name. So again, that personalization that really captures someone's attention because it's to them directly is above the fold where they're going to see it right away. So the next one, if we click through. So below the fold, you'll see all of that information. So if you scroll down, you'll see a little sneak peek at what we're going to be covering in the webinar, a little bit more information about why you might want to attend, and then repeating the CTA there. So I like to give people a lot of chances. Um, I like to duplicate CTAs if they're for a single event, or if you're chosen CTA for that email is that you want people to shop a particular sale that you're having, or you want them to check out a particular product, um, you can always put in a second CTA. So you have one at the top, one at the bottom, especially if they're buttons, they're not too intrusive. Um, they look good. They help actually divide the email a little bit sometimes. So um, I, I always give you lots of chances to sign up for our webinars. That's for sure. <laughs> There's no and opportunity really to do like a static, you know, with like uh, websites, you can do like a static footer or a static yeah. header, but with email, it's like a great idea to put it in a few places if you are going to scroll through and especially on mobile, like it'll. Yeah, exactly. Like if someone decides maybe they, they look above the fold and they go, okay, I kind of want some more information before I sign up. Just remember that when they scroll down that top, that, that bit above the fold is going to disappear. So when they scroll down, they should have the opportunity to sign up or to take an action everywhere that they see. So when they're seeing above the fold, CTA. When they scroll down, they can't see that top bit anymore, CTA. So they don't have to go anywhere. Like just, just pretend your audience is like real lazy. Sometimes that's what you have to do. You have to assume that they want to see and they want to see it and do it right away. So when we look at the footer, I'm just click one more through. There we go. So that's our consistent footer. Um, for most of our emails, our main CTA, Start a Free Trial, we're one of the only folks that do. So uh, you get to check out our product for seven days. 
and, and really get to know what local line is all about. So that's always in our footer. Anyone who receives an email can always just click on that and start a free trial. Uh, if you want to learn more, we have our blog and then pricing as well. Everybody has to know about price. It's necessity. So that's there as well and our social follows. And then you can see at the bottom, we have all that legal information. So we have, we've identified ourselves, our address, and we have an easy unsubscribe right there. So if anybody is tired of hearing from us, they can go ahead and unsubscribe freely. Um, so we, we're happy for people to manage their own preferences. And we put that at the bottom of our emails. So in terms of email structure, that's what we have to say. And uh, now we'll talk a little bit more about the visuals themselves. So in above the fold, we talked about having a high impact visual. Um, can't say enough for Canva. Again, we are not in any way sponsored. I know we've <laughs> we've mentioned it enough times that like maybe we should get a kickback, but <laughs> uh, we really love Canva. Um, they're they're great for being able to create header images, any any sort of visual media that you're looking to create. Um, you can go to canva.com and do that. So I would suggest if you're doing a, an email header image, most of the time they're 600 by 200 pixels or more. So that's the size that that email will appear on the screen. Um, oftentimes I know our emails aren't all the way across the screen. They're actually just that center of the screen. So that's 600 pixels across. Um, and you can automatically create images of that size in Canva. You just search email header and it'll come up with a bunch of different templates that you could use. You could make it from scratch. Um, we do a lot of ours from scratch. So we just, we usually have an image with some text over top, um, or we incorporate a couple of different images together, but tons of options. You can get creative there. Um, I would just say that if you find that your visuals when you download them and you include them in your email are a little bit blurry they're not just not quite as sharp as you want them to be um all you need to do is increase that image size in the same ratio so 600 by 200 can also become 1200 by 400 uh, and so on and so forth and so i would say increase your image size because then when it gets condensed down to 600 by 200 it think of it like there's a lot more for that um there's a lot more, many more pixels for it to work with. And so it doesn't look as blurry. Usually if you're stretching pixels to fill a space, things are gonna start looking a little bit blurry. Um, so just, just be cognizant of that if you're running into issues. And remember that images are thumb stoppers. I can't remember the last time I received a promotional email that was just a wall of text because as marketers, we all know that humans are visual creatures. Um, if you're just hit with a, just think of an email where you were hit with just a wall of text uh, a lot of the time you're not going to pay attention to it, you're going to skim it, you're not going to actually stop and read it. So think of inserting images into your emails as somewhere where someone's thumb is going to stop and look at that. Um, on that same note, I usually put most of my important text, so bolded text, the most important information close to an image so that it conveys that information clearly and usually where that person is stopping anyway. I think Katrina had a little, you came off mute for a sec, was there something, do you want to add something on, on this one? It really wasn't that actually, but just as a funny to note, like one of the, my favorite newsletters is, is actually like a wallet, it's not a wallet tax, it's really broken up, but you have to be like the most incredible writer, and she is, she's like an author, right, so it's like, that's the only pass, if you're an that's incredible yeah, author, writer, storyteller, and that's what it is. It's not, you know, it's, it's not very much a marketing email. Then in that, in that case, you can get away with wall text. But even then, please incorporate some pictures throughout. It definitely encourages people to, you have to build up so high to get your newsletter subscriber list to, uh, to actually read. Yeah, if you're promoting your book, yeah, okay, maybe. Yeah. If so you're do promoting- not, That wasn't really that exciting. Sorry, I shouldn't have been <laughs> forced to do. If you're promoting produce or food products, let's get some pictures up Oh, there. yes, my gosh, please, food. Awesome. All right, if we head to the next slide. We'll talk a little bit about video within email, which is something I'm a huge fan of. So just on the next slide there, um, video messages, uh, and I know Chris might talk speak to this a little bit, um, but turning the camera on yourself and talking about, let's say, like the promotions you have that week, what's going to be at the market, um, what's almost ready or coming into season. 
those are great ideas for video messages that you can include in your emails and all of the, all of the email platforms we talked about allow you to embed video uh, that your audience can click on. And then instead of having a wall of text, you can always have a video there with maybe a summary of what you're saying underneath. You can always put uh, recipes or links into your emails as well. So if there's a great video of someone cooking with kohlrabi, it was a, you know, a vegetable that I was not familiar with until a couple of years back when someone that I follow, a producer that I follow, posted a video of what to do with kohlrabi. Um, and now we have it all the time when it's in season uh, and it's delicious. So a uh, great way to educate your customer base about what you're growing, how to cook it, um, and links to you know, what's in season or something on your website. Uh, you can always do that as well. And gifts. I call them gifts. Some people say gifs. I say gifs. Uh, always great to add a little humor to your emails. Uh, we use them uh, in social media. We use them in some of our emails. Our customers will know that we use them in, in the emails that we send them. Uh, you can always go to you know, a service like Giphy. G-I-F-Y, uh, and look up gifts. Or if you know one offhand that you've seen in your travels on the internet, you can look it up as well. This is the this is the Oprah gif uh, where she says, like, you get a gift, you get a gift. And I think in this episode, she's giving away cars. Um, so it's just kind of a fun, uh, a fun way to convey your message. Um, there's lots of them out there. I even saw, I was searching for this gif and there was one that would said, uh, you get cucumbers and you get cucumbers. So when cucumbers are in season, FYI, that Oprah gif is out there for you. Uh, <laughs> so always a good thing to add. All right. So we're going to move on uh, from video. And I saw a few, uh, I saw a few things in the chat there. I just wanted to make sure that uh, we we're answering those questions. Okay, great. Okay, we're just clarifying uh, about the catalog schedule. So unfortunately not yet. I am 99% sure unless it's a recent update that I, that I don't know, but I'm pretty sure that we can only just include text right now in the catalog schedules. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that's fair. Um, so, and then it, as well, I just wanted to remind everybody of the Q&A. So feel free to drop your questions and we will see them before the actual designated Q&A at the end. So subject lines, it's a hot topic, um, absolutely. Subject lines are the reason why someone will open your email at the end of the day. Um, if someone looks at your subject line and it's too long, convoluted, um, doesn't have anything to do with what you're talking about, uh, then by and large, people aren't going to open it or it's just boring. Uh, someone is going to be less inclined to click on that. So I created a little acronym here that we can use to describe a good subject line or you know some good ideas for subject lines. So it's spun. So scarcity, personalization, urgency, and numbers and lists. We also employ this strategy when we name webinars. Like today, eight ways. Uh, we use that because by and large, people respond to numbers and lists. And in our emails to you about this webinar, we use personalization, urgency, and scarcity. So when we say, you know, don't miss it or reserve your seat, save, save your seat now, we're using those tactics to try and get people to sign up. Just going to put it out there. <laughs> uh, so when you're creating your subject lines, think about those different elements. Think about how you can personalize your subject line, how you can drive people to take action through scarcity or urgency. And I'll, I have my next slide, I'll explain kind of what those are and uh, some, common, some, some common phrases that, that you can use. Uh, but overall, when you're creating a subject line, think about what would make you click on an email, which go through your inbox and your promotions and go, okay, like which ones do I open on a regular basis? And then look at some of their subject lines and see what gets you clicking on something is a great place to start. Uh, this is a good point in the chat. So some subject line words can get your, uh, your email sent into a spam folder. Uh, yeah, so if, you're, if your recipient has a really high spam filter, yes, maybe they'll have 
designated that anything with the word promotion in it or percentage off uh, gets thrown into their spam folder. By and large, um, not everybody has that on their inbox. Um, Gmail, there is a way that you can segment your inbox into stuff that it thinks is important, promotions, I forget what the other one is, um, but it'll get segmented into a promotions folder. Personalization will often get past that. So if you're using personalization in your subject line, uh, oftentimes that will get past a spam filter because the assumption is that emails that are personalized are from someone that you know or that you want to hear from. So keep that in mind when you're crafting those. And if we move on to the next one, I have a couple of, of examples of what those all could be. So in terms of scarcity, today only, this week only, for the next 24 hours, only say a certain number of a certain product left. Um, great way to sell something that you're trying to get out of the freezer, for instance. You know, only uh, 10 packages of, uh, you know, only 10 uh, sirloin roasts left. P, uh, so you can use names. Another idea would be to use specific counties. So let's say you're going to a, far, a certain farmer's market that week, um, you can call out, you can segment your list to people who live in that county, and then you can call that county out in your subject line. So great way to do that. Um, you, so don't miss out, shop now, save my spot, reserve now, all of those action words do really well. Uh, to drive some urgency. And then under numbers and lists, you know, our top five fall veggies, you can, that's kind of a nice customer education one where you can talk about some of the stuff that's coming into season in the fall, uh, using numbers 30% off, two for one. Uh, people tend to click on those number oriented subject lines a lot more than ones that are, say, just saying, instead of saying, we have pumpkins, butternut squash, and acorn squash. Using a subject line like our top five fall veggies is a lot more interesting, one. And two, it's including that number that people are gonna respond to. So stuff to keep in mind when you're making subject lines. Um, another one is to be funny. Uh, we've tried that, uh, we trialed that across the board uh, on our first invite email, we, we trialed that you know, having in brackets, insert catchy subject line here, just a little nod to what we were doing in this webinar. Uh, you say we, but it was your brilliance, Katie. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, mic drop, that was just so good. <laughs> oh, I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> subject lines. <laughs> yeah, most of the time, if, if it's a bad subject line, also blame me, because I'm usually the one behind them. So, um, yeah, you can be a little bit, a little bit funny if you have that relationship with your customers. All right, so we're going to head on to CTAs. I'm going to shoot this over to Katrina to wrap this up, and then we'll have Chris on to talk a little bit more about the content of your email and the tone. Patient Chris, thank you for waiting till <laughs> number eight. Um, we've talked in nauseum about CTAs, and of course, just having that very succinct, very actionable action word um, for your customers to do something. You want them to convert. You want them to do any of the following. Maybe follow you on social visit your website, shop now, try this product, um, share this with your followers. Um, the main thing that I wanted to convey when it comes to email though, is that you really just want to use one or two, really just one main CTA in each of your emails. That's not to say that you can't include that one CTA a couple of times, as you know we mentioned earlier, um, but inc to increase your chances of interaction, engagement, conversion, you know, if you're going to talk about trying this new product, your email should really talk about that new product, applications for that, um, maybe a backstory on it or behind the scenes. And then it's, you know, buy now, shop now. Um, so making sure that it is very, uh, you know, personalized, it's right to that customer. It's uh, very clear on the action you want them to take. It's definitely going to be in your subject line. It's going to be the topic of your copy and it's going to have that button or very clear uh, visual call to action. Um, that if you have questions about call to action, we can go over them. That was kind of really what I wanted to uh, go over since we did kind of talk about that with the folds. I'm going to flip it over now to Chris and we're kind of good on time, but then we're going to wrap up and go into Q and A's. I, I feel like the both of you have way oversold my contribution to this webinar. I, it pretty much if you do everything that you two have talked about so far, it will be pretty persuasive and, and the rest is 
pretty much then will take care of itself. So we talked about everything but so now we're getting into the meat and potatoes of what we're saying. Yeah, I see. Exactly. I see. We brought in the expert. So Chris is actually our sales leader and uh on the daily persuades people and coaches people how to persuade people into buying. So I, I would say that you're you're probably the one to talk about this. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the the art of persuasion is it's not it's you're not you're not actually ended up uh, you don't end up persuading anything anyone of anything that they don't want to do there that isn't a right fit for them so really it starts about making it all about your customers and not about you at all and you can try to tap into uh what's important to them in the context of uh when it comes to local food it's you know what are what products can they get their hands on uh in order to feed themselves and their family um when it comes to you know everything that happened with covid certainly was probably more a, a topic of conversation a year ago relative to now was food safety uh, and, you know, and food security as well, the availability of food. So, you know, reassuring your customers that uh, you can be a reliable source for that is, is going to be really, really important to build that confidence and that relationship with them. So talking about things like that uh, as well, not only, so when I say what's in it for your customers, not only specific products that you have available that week and things like that, but what's in it for them if they start a relationship with you, right? A regular farmer that they, or a producer that they can trust uh, that they know is gonna be there consistently. And then um, once you answer that first question, the second question is what action do I really want them to take, right? And, and Katrina and Katie talked a little bit earlier about that specific CTA, which is great. You've got to have one of those, but really think hard about, you know, what is the thing I want them to do and, and not five things, but, you know, one to two things, actions that I want them to take. Is it check out, you know, sign up for my newsletter? Is it check out my Facebook and what's going on the farm this week? is it um, order this specific product if you're a market it's you know check out our new vendors or things like that um, you're really trying to get them connected between what it, they are looking for and what action that you can help them take that is going to address uh, what is important to them so to get a little bit more specific you know some tips that that we talk about internally with our team and i would say apply to any sales or marketing email out there, but certainly in this space is no exception, is right almost like you speak. I actually had a conversation with one of our reps earlier uh, today. We were talking about um, how to write better emails and how to better connect with people over email when so many of them go unresponded to and even unread. Um, so it's it, tonality is a big, important factor. It's making sure that you write in the tone of kind of you, your customers, what I often say is if you, if you have to write it or, or say what you say out loud, what you want to say, record it with your phone and then play it back and then type out almost verbatim what you said, taking it into account, maybe a little bit of grammar and you may have to polish it a little bit, but that's the general tonality you're trying to get across in that email. If it's super grammatically correct, if it's super structured or long-winded or, or way too short on the, on the other end, um, it's just not going to connect with people. Um, people prefer it, that it's a little bit more informal. The way you, if you were talking to them at the farmer's market is the same way you want to uh, talk to them in an email. And we'll see a couple examples in a moment. Um, other big things are be empathetic. I mean, connect with and understand your customers. Like I mentioned before, food safety was top of mind for a lot of customers. You could probably bet that maybe not all, but a lot of your customers are concerned about that. What other concerns do they have? And, and can you, you know, address them effectively and anticipate them and then address them effectively in a good uh, marketing or, or sales type email? Um, and it just takes, you know, a little bit of thought of what are my customers going through? What's important to them? And then how do I better connect with them? Uh, and then be specific as well. I, I mean, for me, this is always being specific and concise kind of go hand in hand. It's if you try to cover too many things in one email, it's likely a case of where you want to break it up over, you know, multiple emails and make a larger campaign out of it. So, you know, if you find you've got an email that's four paragraphs long, you probably want to split that up into, you know, maybe five to 10 different emails just to break up the content and make sure you have uh, one thing that you really want to, uh, three things that you want your customers to focus on rather than five or 10. Uh, and then being, that will allow you to be concise, shorter text, a little bit more white space on that email. Don't be afraid of the white space. 
Um, but, uh, and don't feel like you have to write out big novels. Um, you know, being more clear and concise is likely you're only going to get 10 seconds of somebody's attention span. You want to make sure that you're going to give them the stuff that's going to be most valuable to them. Uh, and then another tip as well here is use lots of great adjectives. The, the beautiful thing about, you know, food and what a lot of products that we see our customers sell is that they lend themselves well to descriptors, uh, sensory type descriptors. So taste, touch, smell, anything that you can relate back to those senses really uh, evoke an emotional reaction uh, in most people. And they can remember a time where they maybe ate something like that or smelled or touched something like that as well. And then you really get them connected with the, with the product you're promoting or the experience you're trying to create. Um, far better than just kind of giving a nutritional uh, breakdown of, of uh, the product itself. You know, it's, if you can get the pull in the heart there uh, from the heartstrings or pull at the emotion, uh, try to trigger those experiences that people have had, you're going to be far more effective at it. Um, Katie, I think it was you mentioned earlier uh, videos as well. We use a lot of videos uh, in our in our sales emails. Uh, some of you have, may have seen them before or may get them after this webinar, who knows, but um, we, we reserve video for prospect or people that we have a relationship with in the past. We find that people who have never heard of us before, who are reaching out to, to see if maybe we're a good fit for, don't respond all that well to video. They don't necessarily trust it, which I can totally understand. Uh, versus if you want to, you know, do a quick video of you literally out in the field or in the greenhouse picking something, I think that's a fantastic way to showcase a product, or maybe you're in the kitchen cooking it and making it taste fantastic and you're going to do a quick recipe that's a very visual thing that you can send people um, in a quick video typically to customers who you have a previous relationship with you know one thing uh, you know i hope everybody leaves uh, with is the you know you've got eight tips now from two marketing professionals and myself who's not professional at anything but i try um, as to how to write a fantastic marketing email, but what's more important than getting it perfect and doing all these things is just that you do it. You do something, as I like to say a lot, is don't let perfect be the enemy of good enough. Um, and what we see is people who use the catalog schedule, which is kind of our local line feature, what we call it for the automated uh, weekly or whatever frequency you want, email that goes out to your customers is they tend to see about three times as many orders uh, as customers who don't turn, use that feature and 54% larger orders uh, order sizes when they do. So that's a pretty massive difference just by using an automated feature already built within the platform. So just by turning this on and, and having something going out to your customers is certainly better than nothing. And then uh, as the uh, as the ladies have said, use that data to improve a little bit each time as you go through it. So you want to jump to the next slide? So just a couple quick examples that I'm going to pull here. I took out all the identifying characteristics of that email. I didn't want to call anyone out specifically. Um, you know, this is this is an okay email. This is kind of my good version. We'll show the the great version in a second. This uh, it's a little bit long. Um, it tries to pull in a, a few too many. Uh, things all at the same time. And I would argue if you look down to the third paragraph, you know, there's some general information there that doesn't necessarily need to be included in this email. If you are able to uh, actually um, instead draw people's attention to the, the CTA being, oh, you know, check out our store, they will find things like products, eggs, meats, preserves, coffee, other things once they get there, if it's categorized and set up properly, you don't necessarily need to waste um, or take up valuable space in your email to convey information that should be self-evident to customers uh, uh, later on. So I would say kind of slim this down a little bit um, and be specific. But the one thing they do here as well uh, that, that I think they did a good job of is, is they're trying to they have a couple uh, CTAs and they convey information that is important for their customers to know, like all orders need to be in by 9 a.m. On, on Thursday, things like that. It would come up to the next one. Um, I, I really like this, this email. It's short, it's sweet, it's personable. 
um, and they use those descriptors. It's, it's them, the, the people who sent this out speaking from their own experience. You know, we love this creamer and we know you will too. A little cinnamon, nice and odie. It's just perfect. Uh, that's far more, uh, that, that there's a far deeper connection there to this text uh, or this email copy relative to if they were just going to give you a description of uh, what went into making this particular creamer. Um, so I, I think this is just kind of the perfect example of, of what I would suggest. If you're trying, if you've got 10 products to, um, to highlight this particular week, don't go through all 10, maybe pick a couple, highlight, and then you know, get, uh, send the rest out in your next email. I feel like this product just complements like the tone that this person took. Like it's such a warm hug. <laughs> it's like, yeah, like coffee creamer. That's just, that is spot on. Uh, a warm hug is the perfect way to describe it. And, you know, you can you, to even to ham it up or, or um, take it to uh, a step further, right? If you're speaking to your customers, it's like, um, you know, picture yourself out front of the coffee or on front on the deck join it and join a coffee with some vegan creamer, right? It's like, if you can create that visual in people's minds, that's a much more, it's a much better emotional connection to what you're promoting in this case, which is this specific product. Um, and then that little nod there to the Memorial Day sale is, is, you know, they didn't tell you what was all on sale and they didn't give you the massive list of products that that's the error or even the discounts, but it's created enough interest that you're thinking, man, like, yeah, I want to, I kind of want to check it out. So that's, it welcomes the re receiver of this email to then click on it. Um, and an, a link that would take the, the customer to their store to actually see what is on sale, how, how much off that kind of thing and take advantage of it. Totally. Love this one. I think I, I, covered a lot of this already. Um, personal and, and empathetic being a big one. Uh, like I said, put yourself in, in the headspace of your customers, what's important to them, kind of when and where um, they're going to be when they receive it. Are they going to be on their mobile device and you want to make it like yeah, a little bit more mobile friendly or are they likely going to open it from their desktop or something like that? Um, and, you know, what do they really care about? Um, and speak as well from your own personal experience, action oriented. So be specific about what you want them to, to or what you want the customer to do. Um, and then be concise as well around what, uh, don't take a ton of time to say something that should be said in fewer words, uh, much like I struggle with often. And then lastly is be available for questions is if your customers do have follow up and they want to know some more information, um, you know, where can they find that uh, or how do they get in contact with you to ask that specific question? We get asked a lot about, you know, the, the need for a website. Can you just do it with e-commerce alone or can you or do you need a website like a build, built up website with a, a blog on it and about us page and all this other information? I mean, my advice is always it's kind of similar to the context of marketing emails is is you don't want necessarily want to make the, your website the focal point of your entire business because uh, that's going to take people where they can educate themselves, but it doesn't really help them buy. You want to make sure that everything funnels ultimately somewhere where they can take an action, which is that you want them to take, which is buy the, the product that you have available. Uh, it's just the website is a really nice wrapper on the package in it, and it can be somewhere where people can go to find additional information if they're looking for it or that you can uh, direct them to. But not everybody is going to necessarily uh, be as interested in a lot of the information available on your website, but it's there for the customers who are. Um, so, yeah. And there we are, 601. Thanks, Chris. That was great. <laughs> Super helpful. I love the tip about saying it out loud. And mm -hmm. then, yeah, transcribing what you, but that's awesome. There's um, something something that happens when we try to write things down. It's just yeah. what seems super clear up here gets really hard to say. Like, yeah. Yeah, it doesn't necessarily just, translate no. into on page. Yeah. Uh, so those are the eight. I actually summarize them real quick on the next slide. But before we do that, I just wanted one quick slide to say, like, like everything, you have to measure it. And, you know, you want to measure your social, anything marketing, you need to see what's happening. How can you improve it? 
um, what's the effect. So the main metrics that I would encourage you to take a look at is open rate um, at a baseline. So the percentage of the total subscribers who open your email, very uh, self-explanatory. Your click-through rate, uh, so click rate would be how many people opened your email of everyone you sent it to. If you sent it to 10 people and two people opened it, your click rate would be those two people. But click-through is how many people clicked it of those who'd opened it. Um, so clear distinction there. And then the conversion rate, of course, is if you want somebody to try your product, buy it now, you know, visit our website, how many people actually did the thing that you asked them to do, um, and growth rate. How quickly is your email list growing? Is it, is it not? Um, are people unsubscribing? So just keeping an eye on that and uh, making changes where necessary. Are you sending it maybe at not the right time? Is your email copy, could it really be tightened up? Are you using too many calls to action throughout? Um, so again, just that'll all be up to you to kind of take a look at. I can't really advise it, but I just want you to uh, be mindful of these metrics and measure them. Um, just as we wrap it up, the eight is just to make it easy for people to get on your list, create a schedule, personalize everything you're sending, optimize the structure that above the fold and making sure that above and below and the footer are optimized, keeping it visual, including pictures, GIFs, videos, creative subject lines to encourage open rates, CTAs throughout, or sorry, ACTA, but CTAs throughout, and persuasive copy. That's that. It always feels like we try and keep it succinct and then we just <laughs> got a lot to say, but we told ourselves this time, two slides, two slides for each thing. And we still did that. So now I think we have to yeah, cut it down even more. Uh, you know what? Actually, before we move on to Q&A, um, real quick, we have, I just wanted to, in case anybody has to drop off, mm -hmm. um, we can quickly kind of wrap this up and then kind of keep chatting with the Q&A. But we have email marketing templates that if you want to download these, um, we're going to include these in the, uh, the follow-up email. But this is something where it's literally a copy and paste. And whatever provider you're using, literally just copy and paste in there and use your personalization tokens, change up the copy, your products, et cetera. So we've got like a bunch of gimmies in there. It's actually, it's a Google Doc uh, link. So you'll be redirected to a Google Doc where it's just a copy paste. Um, and then of course our social media essentials for farmers. Uh, we haven't yet downloaded that chock full of Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok tips and best practices of social. But that's, that's it. And then where you can reach us, but this will be in the recording. So we'll jump back to the q and I didn't want those to get lost and we can kind of keep chatting. So we've got one from Tina. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank is you. there a way to measure open rates on uh, local line catalog schedules? I feel like I was so much more well-versed in the platform. I used so, to be. Can you? So yeah, no, I, I'm happy to take this one. Um, so <laughs> short answer, uh, yeah, I don't, I won't just throw it out there at you and, and uh, force you to answer it. So uh, Tian, short answer is no, not today, there isn't. Um, we do, please uh, reach out to your success reps. So uh, those of you who are using local line today have seen um, the relatively new addition of the reports functionality. Um, so please reach out to your, and we're evolving that and, and adding new reports to that constantly. So please add, uh, send a note to your success rep to provide that feedback. Um, that's number one. Number two is, um, and I'm probably going to get in trouble for saying this. So, so nobody repeat this past this webinar, but we are bringing in, um, some integration, broader integration functionality into local line in the very near future. So stay tuned for that. Uh, that it will include integrations with tools um, like MailChimp that you can take advantage of the functionality in those tools and better in, and automatically integrate them with local lines so you don't have to manually move spreadsheets back and forth. You're going to be able to do that automatically on your own. Very soon. Yeah, can't wait. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, next question uh, popped up in the chat here. So what do statistics say about how many is too many emails? Email fatigue. Ooh, that's a good one. Um, earlier, we suggested picking a day and making that the day that you send out your promotional email. I would say start there um, and then try going to maybe two a week and see what happens. See what happens to your open rates. See what happens to your click through. Um, I would say every day is a little much. There are some brands where I receive uh, an email to my inbox every single day. And every single day, 
I delete it. For some reason, I'm one of those people that like, I don't go and unsubscribe to anything because I like to spy on what other people are doing as a marketer. But uh, I, uh, I would say every day is a little much too for this industry is great. I think people like to know, especially going into the weekend when most folks are going to be doing their shopping, whether in person at the market or whether they're going to have some time off to be able to shop online. Um, I would say if you're doing Tuesdays, maybe pick a Thursday or a Friday morning. Um, people tend on Fridays to be opening more promotional emails because if they're working a desk job, Friday's a little chill. So uh, we do see some decent open rates from uh, from the, from industries directed at uh, direct consumers. Um, see, see better open rates on Fridays as well. So don't be afraid of Fridays, uh, but Thursday or Friday might be a good second day for you to choose there. I, I would say it also depends on um, your your schedule too, right? Like pick days yeah. that that make sense with your uh, with your schedule. So if you do deliveries on let's say a Saturday, you don't want to send out the email on Friday where people don't have enough time to, to order. Um, just just as an example. So that's one other factor just to consider. Um, but I, I think. Katie made a fantastic point that I really want to make sure it gets hit home is it's not about um, how many emails as much as it is about frequency is yeah. probably the more thing to be aware of. Um, because, I, you know, I look at it this way, people, a lot of you presumably are selling food products, people need to eat three times a day, seven days a week, that's not going to change anytime soon. So if that's the case, you know, a, a frequent regular email is very important um, and that they're going to need to eat in order from you next week, just as they did this week and just as they did the previous week. Uh, it's just don't send five in a week because then, yeah, people are probably going to even get a little upset with you. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Good point for sure. The other thing too, I don't know that we mentioned this with the entire webinar, but um, depending, actually, sorry, I'm sure all of the email marketing providers that you choose, you can schedule out your email. So you don't necessarily yeah. have to actually physically be in there writing on a Thursday morning. Um, yeah, pick a time that works for you to be able to kind of even bash these out like two a week and, and just schedule it out. Yeah, you can schedule out like if you're, if you know that a particular, if you're sending, um, an email with just updates uh, of what's available that week, or you're looking to highlight a specific product once a week, create a template and just insert the new information into that, schedule it out for the day it's going to go out. It can be, you know, an hour of your week um, is doing that and that's it. Uh, since you can schedule them out ahead of time, schedule for that week, schedule for the next week, if you already know that information um, and it can be really easy. Do an hour email, hour social, batch everything. Yeah, batch everything. Make it work for you. Um, yeah. I think that's all I see in the Q&A. Um, but let's open up to our chat. There's another channel. For in, in the local end product. I'd be interested to know more, more uh, Rack, what you, uh, what you mean by that. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, feel free to, uh, after the webinar as well, there's gonna be a survey that comes up. Uh, you can put that in the comment section as well, or you can feel free to reach out to us directly and we can we can chat about that. Uh, good point though. And uh, we'll, we'll, we can follow up with you on that one, uh, RAC. And it'll come, I think if you reply to the email uh, invite, any of the email invites, it'll come right to us. Yeah. We're in Fort Local Line always, you can reach us there to, reach the team, so. All right. That's yeah. Awesome. And just quick, sorry, a quick answer on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. If they're referring to a, like a chat bot, like we have on our website as an example, um, to add that into local, I know there aren't any current plans to do that, but I, I mean, as hopefully you all know by now, we're very customer driven in terms of what we do and our roadmap. So uh, if that's super important to you, let us know. We're happy to talk to you about it and, and learn a thing or two, how it can help you and, and put that into our queue. Yeah. Not to, not to toot our own horn too much, but yeah, we actually, like if you submit something like that, we see it and we consider it and we we actually respond to those sort of feature requests. So don't be afraid to do that. Um, I'm just seeing a couple more details here come through. So sometimes direct chat triggers uh, are gonna be better received than an email. Depends on, yeah, usually depends on the customer, thinking your customer, right? Like it's, it's about them and their preferences. And um, if they, 
if, if they receive that better, if that's a better way of communication for them, um, absolutely. If you're looking at doing regular updates and more uh, uh, promotional emails to let people know, email is definitely the way to go in terms of one-on-one -on -one communication or comms with your um, with your customer. Yeah, direct messages um, definitely definitely the way the way to go there. Uh, but again, we can we can kind of talk about that. Direct also works best if you are available to be on yeah. the receiving side and go back and forth and. We find, at least in my experience, talking to a lot of our customers, one of the, the big advantages of why they use local line and why they use email is to be able to kind of automate the their their side of the customer experience. Anything their customer needs to see in the middle of the day when they're busy doing what they need to do, and then any action they need to take, they can kind of do it whenever is uh, convenient for them on the seller side. Uh, and chat's a little bit different. It requires you to be on demand uh, more. So I think that would be one of those nuanced things where some people would love it and some people would hate it. So I can see it going either way. Yeah, and it's definitely not a not an either or thing either. No. They're two, two totally different strategies, yeah. 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 But Great. Thanks. Well, we're a little over time here. So I, I'm going to say, well, uh, if you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to us. Again, you can reply to the invite email. It's going to go directly to us, or you can email info at localline.ca and, and we'll get that. And we're happy to answer your, your questions about email marketing, um, or we'll direct you to uh, the right person within, within the company if you need to chat. So again, thanks for, uh, thanks for being here, everyone. And we're always uh, happy to put these webinars on and we will be sending out an invite for our next one, which will be happening in two to three weeks. So stay tuned for that. I believe we're going to have a look at CSAs and how to use local line for that. So that'll be an exciting one. Uh, look out for that invite coming to you very soon. So everyone have a great rest of your day and uh, we'll see you on the next one. Yes.